Loving greetings, my friend and fellow light walker, and welcome to another exciting week and when I am coining Fertile February. And this week, fertility goes to the inside. We'll be transitioning from the frequency of Aquarius to the spiritual essence of Pisces. And Sensei says, this is the week to exercise self-compassion. From my heart to yours, keep streaming for your weekly Namaste Today. Welcome to Namaste Today. I'm your host and spiritual life coach, Sensei Christopher Wateki. Thank you so much for your presence today. Namaste. Last week I was off the air. It was not my intention, so please pardon my absence. It did seem it was the universe's intention, however, because I don't know about you, but I experienced some dramatic ascension symptoms as the universe was calling us to a higher frequency. Last week, we reached the highest pinnacle, really, of our Aquarius energy. And if you don't know, that is the I Belong Consciousness, or the Law of Attraction in Action. This week, we kick off the Pisces season with a powerful full moon at step zero. So, for each of the 12 signs this week, I'll be talking about what that full moon means for you in our tea time. And in our soul collective, I'll talk about how the planets have changed and what that means for your plans ahead. And also, at the end of this show, I have a special announcement. I now have details about my Mount Shasta retreat coming this June. But first, let's take a look at the week's moods and your zodiac weather. This zodiac weather is from Monday, February 18th to Friday, February 22nd, 2019. Looking at your five day mood cast, it is a week of bipolar energy. Let's drill down. On Monday, it's sunny but scattered. Step 29 rules the day. You're tested on all Aquarius transits, and the moon in Leo makes it personal. On Tuesday, it's cloudy overcast with a chance of earthquakes. That's because the full moon apexes in the morning at step zero, and that full moon in Virgo calls for a new reality like yesterday. On Wednesday, it's sunny, but you're rebalancing. After that full moon, step one brings some love into the equation, and the moon in Virgo brings some healing. But on Thursday, it's cloudy and hypersensitive again. Step two rules today, emotions flow, and the moon in Libra throws things off balance. And then finally on Friday, it's sunny, but you'll be learning. Step three rules the day, and Jupiter finally hits the Grandmaster Step 21, so you know it's gonna start to get fun. Well, as I explore the collective consciousness this week, it's really about exercising self-compassion. In our next segment, I'll explain to you why. And now taking a look at the upcoming week. This week, the collective consciousness will be exercising self-compassion. Now, you may be exercising it because you're acquainted with self-compassion, <laughs> or you may be exercising it because the universe sort of arm wrestles you a little bit. The universe is not trying to strong arm you, but it is now time to be compassionate to yourself. Let me explain. First, let's roll back the clock a little bit. We just toured the Aquarius consciousness. In fact, it ends on Tuesday with the full moon that happens precisely at step zero. The Aquarius consciousness is literally the law of attraction. So the age of Aquarius is human beings being aware of the law of attraction, which means human beings being aware of the fact that Mother Earth is designed to respond to your private will, all right? Now we're not ready. Some of us are trying to manifest. Some of us are good at that. But generally, that's what we're waking up to, the fact that we are kind of magical beings that interact with Earth consciousness. This, in my opinion, is sort of a simulation. Our lifetime is a simulation of our soul. And we'll go into the philosophy of that sort of thing, but we've been awake. We didn't even realize it. I think the human race just thought we were stuck on a ride in a theme park. Uh, we didn't realize we had control, that we could design the theme park, that we could create and enjoy the journey. Now, compounding the issue, not only did we not realize that we could control the theme park of consciousness, but we've had so much baggage, so much pain in our soul. 
And I don't know if you are familiar, but a human being spends their first 30 years just awakening to their past life consciousness. It takes until your Saturn return for you to be acquainted with all the situations and vibrations that your soul has to deal with. So they talk about how in the old world, the average person did not live past 30. Well, that means we literally have been in the dark ages. We have never really, as a mass population, been able to live past 30 and be able to process some of these issues. A lot of people think these are dark times. I don't think so. I think these are wonderful times. Honestly, people are finally processing their issues. They're finally letting it out. So we had a lot of spiritual baggage which we kind of thought was us, or if we were even more asleep, we thought it was them. Okay, so there's like layers. First you think the world's causing it, then you realize it's you causing it, or you think it's you, then you realize, oh, I'm just, I'm just hurting. I've just had a lot of hard times in past lives, and my soul is literally trembling. And that trembling of the soul can also be called karma. Karma is the trembling of the soul. Now, this is all going to add together, so stay with me, okay? In Aquarius, we were sort of uh, setting our frequency. A frequency is literally the vibration you want to set. So it is like a boogie, and everyone has a boogie, all right? And a lot of us were really kind of stepping on our own shoes and tripping, at least in my house. (laughs) And that's because we had a lot of baggage, and also because we really hadn't thought about frequency before. We've been so obsessed with survival and fight or flight and all these lower vibration things, which are part of the fact that we never processed our karma. So in Aquarius, which was the last 30 days, we sort of found our boogie again. And I have to say, uh, I, don't, I don't think I found my boogie. That's not true. I got rid of the bad dance moves. <laughs> I got rid of the out-of-tune instruments. I got rid of the parts that, um, that I had been so used to in the orchestra. I just thought that's how it sounds. But, you know, you get so used to certain negative frequencies in your life that you just like learn to tune it out over time. And what I learned in Aquarius was, oh man, I've tuned out a lot of noisy stuff. And it's not that I should tune it out. It's that I should get rid of these things. These, these don't work anymore. So we polished up our frequency. Now we're moving into Pisces. Now Pisces is the consciousness of our deepest spirit. There's actually layers of consciousness and they happen to be um, basically, it's just like kind of like prim- primal life. Um, we have primer, we have consciousness, and then we create a, a bubble around that, and then a bubble around that, and then a bubble around that, and really, every really, it's just layers of consciousness of bubbles. And every time we get the bubble, we expand. And the nature of the universe is we're always expanding, we're always adding bubbles. Now we could argue were the bubbles already there? Yes, they were. When I say we're adding bubbles, it's really we're waking up to the fact that there's more and more and more bubbles or more and more and more dimensions, all right? Now here in the Earth incarnation, the deepest uh, energy that's connected to your soul, your host of this whole situation, is Pisces. This is the state of awareness that literally is the communication to God, universe, your higher self. And if you don't know, a lot of people think the soul is in the body. Not true. Actually, the body is in the soul. The soul creates kind of like, um, kind of like a sack that a baby is uh, in, right? And it's a spiritual energetic sack, and in that energetic sack, it forms the baby. <clears throat> so we are in the hands of our soul, and we are not even aware of that <laughs> as humans. That's how asleep we've been. Now, normally, whenever we kind of hit this transit. We had to face lots of tremors with the soul because our soul, the connection to all of who we are, it's made a lot of babies, which are incarnations. Our souls had a lot of babies and it's not worked out most of the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so the soul has, is trembling, as I mentioned before. The Aquarius frequency that we were working on the last 30 days, this frequency was kind of how we boogie on Earth. Now we're getting to the soul level. And the question is, this week in particular, will you let go of some of the trembling? Now, in a simple sense, if you've been kind of working with me, if you're in Serious 12 my Personal Sensei Service, we work really deep on this. We've been working on getting our frequency and stuff. And a lot of times, because you had so much noise in your daily life, you may or may not be aware that your soul even is trembling. And, and I didn't discover it until I just kept removing 
influences like, oh, well, then I'll detox the body. And then, okay, maybe it's pesticides. Oh, maybe it's my mother. You know, <laughs> like you like work out every little type of thing. And, and, and it was all those things, <laughs> just so you know. Um, but then you finally get to like, okay, I'm still trembling. There's still something wrong. There's still something not right. Like something still feels off. And that is the soul. That is the soul. Now, is the soul truly trembling? No, the soul is actually vibrating its identity and it's manifesting according to the vibration. And so our soul now has the option to move on to the, in this next chapter. Um, we had, when we had come to Pisces up until last year, just this is me as an empath reading it, as an astrologer seeing it, um, we had, every time we hit Pisces, it was like some monster from a past life, basically. We, we were facing certain issues we tremble over each time. So it was like, oh, I tremble over this, and I tremble over that, and I tremble over this. And yes, it goes back to childhood, because remember, everything between 0 and 30 is actually the reconstruction of the soul or the soul's memory on Earth. Um, and so this year, I believe, we have worked through all of the ghosts, Okay, not all of them, um, all of the ones based on failure, lower vibration, that sort of thing. Um, now we have questions of greater things, our soul, and I think they're higher vibration things. They're not around survival and fight or flight or whatever. Therefore, it's time to spiritually let go of those of those spiritual, you know, to basically close the case on some spiritual karma, and that is where self compassion comes in. Because what I've learned, particularly in the last two weeks, I've always learned, I've always known this, but boy, God will arm wrestle me. I mean, the pain will get greater. I'll have to face greater pain. Um, and that's due to the fact that I've repressed pain my whole life. So this is the first time I've been like, well, what do you have to say, pain? And pain's like, ah, like, oh, you're really pissed. <laughs> you know, like, so I, I ignored it. But I have learned that the only way to, to, to go with this is kind of like ice skating. You have to just go with the flow and you have to be compassionate to yourself. And this week, the soul collective, the collective conscious needs to be compassionate to themselves, basically. Now, the full moon kicks off this transit and I'll talk about that in the tea time. <clears throat> but I want to just focus on the fact that compassion is in a simple way that you go with the emotional needs of yourself because you're spiritually sort of taking off clothes. And I don't know if you ever, you know, you've taken off clothes before. Like sometimes as a kid, it's like you can't, your arm is stuck. You can't get your, you know, right? like you can't get it off. You're like, mama, help, right? Well, I think spiritually that's kind of what we're going to face. It's like we just have to kind of go. It's going to be wacky. We're, we're taking off a spiritual costume. And this goes way back, all right? And that's really what the, the, the week is about. I mean... Um, on Monday, we have Step 29 Aquarius, which is basically the final note of your, fi of your vibration, which is basically of your frequency transit, which is basically in the orchestra. You know, it's like this final. So there's this kind of crazy energetic oh, on Monday, and you have to kind of hold the note, and that's what the, the test is. So on Monday is can you hold the note, right? And then Tuesday, full moon, and full moon is like, bap, step zero is... I have learned razor sharp. And so it's like, all right, that's it. We are discontinuing step zero. We are discontinuing Pluto. We are, it, it is, there's no discussion. It is happening. Now, the full moon is in Virgo. So what's happening is on the physical world level. So on the physical world level, it's like, that's it. I'm done with this job. I'm done with this. I'm done with that. The full moon is going to give you the ability to go like, I'm done. Seen. And it's really that that's the agitator, which is the shadow of the spirit. The whole reason you're in this crazy life is because your soul was trembling and it brought in a representation of the crazy life. So one of the self-compassion points that I'm working on with the joiners this week is you can't let your daily life trigger you because you've already decided it's all going to be redone, that we're going to make over the whole house. So part of the self-compassion is, it's okay, we're getting rid of this, it's okay, we're going to fire them, it's okay, none of this counts, erase, 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 right, like, and when will it be born, Sensei? In Virgo, okay, so six months from now, you'll see the whole set decorated, the whole life reinvented, but you can only grow that life if you change the essence of the vibration, 
which is Pisces, and you can only get to the essence of the vibration if you are compassionate and you go with the flow, okay? And you're just like, it's okay, okay, it's all good, blah, 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 the whole way. Now, this week our mind actually is way ahead. Mercury is way ahead right now, so we're thinking about the future, and we're thinking about changes. And basically, as you move through Pisces, compassion and self-mercy are very similar. Mercy is taking off the load. So in some cases, you're carrying too much, you're doing too much, you're being too hard on yourself. Okay, so like you have to just like, who cares? Screw it. God's fine with it, so why do I care? All right, like if God wouldn't judge you, then why the f are you? Right, like that's one of the things I've learned. So, but our mind is way ahead, and, and by the end of the week, our mind is going to be able to go, oh, I see where this is going. So it's going to be the full week before you, you see what's going, um, and where this is going. And that's all from the compassion. Maybe your focus is with the earth in, in Virgo. Maybe your focus is like, I'm changing my life. But really what's happening is the essence has to change. And yeah, if you can't detach from this, then you might have to organize the garage to be able to deal with the spirit. That's, that's fine. But you are getting it backwards as far as how reality manifests. You know, you are chasing the tail, basically. This is the source. You don't clean this up, but you're just going to make more mess here again. That's how it works. So our mind goes, okay, I see what's happening. I see where my spirit is going. And overall, this is a spiritual change. This is an essence change. This is an eon change. This is a karmic change. This is a wardrobe change with the earth in Virgo. Um, now, but there's also other voices going on. Mars goes from step three to step six this week, and it's in Taurus. Thank God. Oh my God, I hated it in Aries. Mars is in Taurus. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to be feeling good. And Mars actually hits step four on Wednesday and Thursday, so our ego gets challenged. Mars is our ego. Uh, we're kind of trailblazing for the things we want to create. And I would say Wednesday and Thursday, your ego will be especially tender, okay? And we're launching a new ego right now. Another thing happening is a lot of energy in Capricorn this week, which is our capacity to control things. And we have Venus on Saturn at the beginning of the week. Venus is what we have to open up to. Saturn is the decisions that we've made. So in the beginning of the week, we're like, okay, I guess we got to do it. You know, so that's kind of how the week starts. All right, let's do it. And by the end of the week, Venus hits Pluto on Saturday. And I think there's going to be some cray-cray fireworks on Saturday um, due to the fact that um, Venus crosses Pluto, and that means that you have opened up to the new dimension. You have opened up to, you've opened, to the, opened up to the fact that this is something is dead and something is born, and that is the way it is. So we're kind of, it's like, we're kind of opening up to our new way of controlling ourselves, our new way of governing our life, our new approach to governing. And so we're kind of getting, and this is, these are decisions that were already made. This is the fall through and the understanding and the consequence and the full, you know, it's like you have a, bull, a blueprint for what's going to happen. But like, then suddenly when you get there, it's just so many more details than you could have ever imagined right? And that's kind of what we're seeing with Venus is like, whoa, okay, I, I didn't realize that if I, if I volunteered to be the PTA head, it would be like this, you know, like, it's like, yep. So, and it's like, okay, you know, I think, you know, I think people, and this is where you have to nurture yourself and that sort of thing. Um, the other exciting part of this week is going to be Jupiter. Jupiter um, really made things, I mean, Jupiter crossed my black loaf, which was like, huh. Looking back, I was fine, but it was tough. You know, like uh, Jupiter is now, as we begin the week, at step 20. What's, what's important about Jupiter at step 21 is that it's the grandmaster step of Sagittarius, which is the story you were born to live. When you hit a grandmaster step, basically with the grandmaster ruler, it's basically a 3-3-3 three, three, three in astro-numerology. So whenever you have 3-3-3, three, 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 it's infinity, basically. It goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, and it means that your conscious story hits a turning point that changes everything in infinity forever and ever. Now, I don't have time to get real deep right now, but I believe that when you change your current life, you retroactively change your past life. So this would be a quantum moment where all of your stories in all dimensions will be sort of updated, and that happens mm, Sunday. Technically, it happens before that. When does Jupiter hit 21? Doo, 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 Thursday. So Jupiter hits 21 on Thursday, but it takes a couple minutes to get the party going. 
uh, says Jupiter. And we have some major showers and, and storms, I think, on Saturday. Um, and so I think Sunday is when you start to see the galactic truth of everything. Um, but all of next week will be part of seeing that galactic truth. So, how, you know, so many changes in one week, and, and we're being called into our, into our self-compassion. Um, you really just kind of have to go with the flow and be easy on yourself. There's no handbook. Um, you just have to, you know, for most of my viewers, you're light walkers um, or you're light workers. Uh, you work with people. You know how to take good care of yourself. So this is a time where you need to. And you first, client second would be the way I go. Now, I think it's time to talk about that full moon coming up. So go steep yourself some tea and let's have our weekly tea time. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our tea time. This week's tea time topic is the razor sharp Virgo full moon. Yes, indeed, I believe this full moon will be razor sharp. The reason being, it is a step zero full moon or zero degree full moon. And that's the thing. Zero means zero. It is the absolute line. Now, we've been having zero degree full moons since we were in step zero in November when we had a full moon in Taurus. That was the first step zero. Interesting, eh? And since every full moon has been cutting, 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 cutting. This is how I'm very clear. I mean, the universe isn't even screwing around. It's like zero, zero, zero. It's like, and just in case the point isn't clear, says God. And literally, I see this as a scalpel and a consciousness cutting step zero us away from all the old stuff. And then at the same time, we've had new moons at step 15, which is peace and love, peace and love peace and love. And that's been our new moons, all 15, going back to when we were in the net six season of Libra. So this is yet another. But the reason why this one is probably going to have more consequence, we say, is the fact that the moon is in Virgo. <laughs> Dramatic pause with a sip. Well, as you know or don't know, Virgo is reality. And so we will be drawing a line with reality. And actually, Virgo is the only state of awareness that is actually reality. So everything you experience in the whole outer world, Virgo rules that. Everything in the inner world, 11 other signs. That's how complicated we are in the inner world. It's only one sign that manages the outer world. Now, mind you, Virgos can handle a lot of details, right? They can manage a lot of stuff. They're amazing at keeping all sorts. That's reality. And so they're part of that reality. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, what, what has been reality is going to need to just be cut. We need to cut this reality. And that's what the full moon is. I've had enough. Okay. Now, even I will probably be looking at reality and saying I'm having enough, but really it's about our soul, the sun in Pisces. And the sun in Pisces, as I was describing in the last segment, our soul has been through a lot, no matter what age you are, okay, uh, so far. I mean, depending on how far you go back. But if you go back... <laughs> If you're a baby boomer, you know, that's, you know, we've been through a lot. It's been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot this whole time. And I think our soul has been heavy with trembling. And I think we've come to a point where we are ready for a fresh start. And that's what I think uh, the full moon is on the other side. So the sun represents our heart. And our heart is saying, I want a fresh start. I want a fresh start. And our basically Virgo consciousness, which is reality, okay, and this is the critic in us, really, because the critic wants to see if it turned out right. You know, it's not about criticism, it's about did it turn out like the way we want it. So I think we're gonna be like, I want a new life, and then the critic is gonna be like, this sucks, it all has to go. Okay, everything has to go. It's gonna be a fire sale <laughs> on Fire Island. So the full moon is a moment right after we get to the frequency on Monday. During the day in North America, um, it apexes around 10 a.m. Eastern time, somewhere around them, between 10 and 10.30 a.m. Somewhere on Tuesday, we're like, you'll reach a point where you're like, enough is enough. I can't take this anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. Okay? And I'm just telling you that right now to empower you. And, you know, the... I, the, kind of like the habit is to blame the world or blame things in the world or whatever. But if you understand reality like I teach it, that it is a magical incarnation of who you are, 
you're wasting your time blaming the old movie or blaming the old set. You're wasting your time because you're, the dog is chasing the tail. This is what your heart wants is why you had this, come or not come. So no judgment. See, that's the whole thing about this week. You, ha you can't judge. It's like, okay, well, I screwed up. I ordered the complete wrong reality. I want a new one. You know, control, alt, delete. Eh, right? <laughs> like, that's it. I'm done. And that's okay. But the point is, is don't get caught up in blaming, blaming the world. And the ego, to some degree, is already kind of Mars's, um, in fact, at the time, Mars is at step three, Taurus. Now, mind you, Uranus is moving into Taurus next. It's not going to feel like Uranus and Aries. I, I promise you that. That's just for me observing history when it's happened before. Uranus and Aries is intense and it's very irritating. <laughs> okay, So Uranus is heading into Taurus and Mars basically I see is scouting the new territory. So our ego is kind of scouting the new territory. And what's going to come of all this spiritual change that begins this week is that you're going to get to build something new because you changed all this. You changed your frequency, you, you got rid of your trembling. Next we'll work on our our ego, and then it's showtime. The sun is in Taurus, and we manifest, so we start manifesting. So the universe is doing us a huge service by giving us the opportunity to get rid of the crap that self-sabotaged us, to get rid of the crap from the family line, to get rid of the crap from the racial lines. I mean, we, we also pick up crap from all sorts of directions and build something without that in it, right? So the full moon is that moment, really, where we're like, okay, I, let's do it. Let's do it. And Mars at step three, Taurus is like, anything's possible. Let's see what is possible. Right? Like, and, and, and really, it's just like anything. We can even, as I like to say in Hollywood, creative with a K. So creative, we, we will come up with the way we spell creative. Okay? Like creative with a K. So our ego has that freedom. Jupiter at step 20 at the moment of the full moon, though, is kind of like... It's kind of dramatic. So in our stories, we're kind of biting our nails and we're like, I, I hope it works. I don't know. There's that kind of moment. Remember, Jupiter goes to step 21 when it starts getting fun on Thursday, which is after the full moon. So the full moon is kind of a moment of we're not letting you know if it turns out. You'll have to stay tuned, right, is kind of how the universe is going to go about it. And then we have all this very serious but determined energy at the time of the full moon in Capricorn, okay? Um, I love this. Uh, first of all, Saturn's at step 16, which is awesome because 16 degrees nets to a seven, which is spirit. And if there's anything Saturn usually isn't, is spiritual. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it kind of puts, basically in that moment, the full moon, we're saying, Saturn, you report to God. You know, you report to higher self. You, you, I know you want to control the world, not your boss. Okay. So we have that moment. Venus at 18. That's why I was smiling because I realized it's going to trine my sun at 18 degrees. Um, I love 18. My favorite number, one of them. Um, so Venus is at 18, which means, okay, I'm opening up to go time. It's go time. It's show time. That, that's my whole life, by the way, which is why I tend to collapse from time to time. And then we have at step 22, which is a four degree orb, a very powerful uh, four degree orb between the two, which means huge innovation. Pluto at 22 is basically changing the channels. So it's my belief that there's all sorts of goodies and Easter eggs built into reality that humans haven't tapped into yet. All sorts of powers. I'm not kidding. And Pluto, this is the first time where our decisions are kind of like, uh, you know, I'm thinking of that, I'm, I'm thinking of that movie, um, what was that movie with Drew Carey where it was like all reality show about him. I can't think of the title of it. But like, and eventually he breaks free of the studio that this is all being shot in. To me, Pluto at step 22 is that moment. We're like, what, this is a studio? You know what I mean? Like, kind of thing. Like, you know, and, and, and if you are following, you know, your heart and all this sort of thing, I think with Pluto at 22, that is going to happen. Now, Pluto's at 22 for a while. So people will kind of fire that reality at any time. But on the full moon, it's possible. Let's put it this way. We're certainly gonging it, like we're certainly ramming whatever that, that wall is, that, that wall that's been holding us back. Pluto 22 is like, I know there's something that we don't see, which is cool and very exciting. We haven't really kind of begun to tear down that wall in our lifetime, ever in our lifetime. And then Chiron is in Aries, which is really awesome because 
Uh, for one, Chiron and Pisces sucked. <laughs> I just, I know, I, it was very difficult. Um, I think Chiron moving to Aries is going to be so much more satisfying because when Chiron was in Pisces, um, we were healing our spirit. So you don't know. I mean, you never knew if you were doing it right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when Chiron goes into Aries, you'll have like life example. You'll see behavior. You'll have all sorts of things and you start to feel so much better and you no longer feel like a jackass at certain things. So this is the beginning of really getting back on our feet is the other aspect. So I think it's an interesting. And Black Lilith is at step 21 Aquarius, just so you know, which means that at that moment, we're kind of, we're kind of facing the fear of the unknown. Okay, so whatever's behind that wall is like, if you have fears of things behind walls, I would think that might come in. Don't let it come in your vibration, though. But with step zero being part of the full moon, <laughs> nothing's going to come in that you don't want to come in. I mean, this is the power of boundaries, absolute boundaries. And as always, I'll put on the side what astrology sign I am talking about. And we will begin with the babies of the zodiac, the Aries. Arieses are, with their heart, starting a fresh start with faith. So for them, it's a new, a new day for faith. you got to give faith a whole new it's like, basically, the best way to put it for Aries is like, maybe you thought God was screwing you. Maybe God was. Either way, let's give God a second chance. Maybe you're not doomed. Maybe, maybe it was something you didn't realize. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I think Aries has kind of had a, well, they've had a spiritual attitude based on their past lives. And now that you've started to heal your past lives, maybe your faith is ready to change. Maybe you want to start working with Holy Spirit because the union of Holy Spirit and ego, could you imagine, right? So I think that's the beginning. Now on the other side, earth, uh, the moon and earth, and earth is I manifest. So when the moon, on a full moon, people don't realize that we're creating on a full moon. We're, we're, we're manifesting because the earth and moon conjoin. So it is a birth just like the new moon is a birth. It's a different birth. And it's interesting. It's a birth on earth, an earth birth. So there's an earth birth for you in your daily life. You're going to have, it's just like, you're going to basically more than any other sign are just going to be like, I am effing done with everything, right? Um, now, some Aries will be like, take me away, God. You know what I mean? Like, but it's like, nope, you know, new faith. So it kind of depends on where your experience level is. Um, but, the, if, you know, but the good news is it's the first day of a new day. And since they ain't BSing, I think Aries can be, Aries, the Ari, can be in a totally new life by September. So if you stay true by September when the sun goes into Virgo, you can have a totally new life. And that will bring new faith regardless. Taurus! Tauruses are having a fresh start with society. Yes, I guess so. I don't feel it yet. I was going there to see. I was like, do I feel that way? Yes, I have a whole new campaign. I have a whole new, look at the new stuff. See, that's, that's New Star Society. Like, oh, let's freshen up the set, right? So we are, <clears throat> basically our heart wants to come to the world without guilt. I think Taurus has carried a lot of guilt that they let the world down in past lives. And now it's like, okay, I didn't let the, let's just, it's all good. And we're going to start over. So Tauruses are starting over with their relationship to society. What's a, what's, where enough is enough, n now that you have paid for your sins in society, it's a new day for your heart. And I think this will be good for Tauruses because this is like, a, this is a new day to play. Someone showed me, my mom showed me a video of this, of this bull that was strutting down the street. Have you guys seen that viral? It was so cool. It made me really like, whoa, us Tauruses, we're really aware. So our new self-love, this is a new self-love. That's what's going to be real. We're manifesting new self-love. And we're getting a fresh start with society for the Taurus. Gemini. Gemini is getting a fresh start with career. So Gemini's came with a lot of legacy karma. And they came with a lot of, oh, I let the I kind of let the let the world down, but I more like I did nothing with my life. Or, you know, I didn't become a doctor like my dad wanted me to, and all, all that sort of humdrum stuff, right? So Pisces had, I mean, Gemini's had a lot of that energy, and they're finally like, okay, let's just start over with the whole career thing. Okay, like so, um, so they're getting a fresh start with their career. What's birthing new with the moon in Virgo is a new emotional foundation. 
You being able to feel better about yourself and be able to feel good day to day and not worry in your head that you're not going to feel good because that's what Gemini's have been doing. Like, oh, I hope I feel good. You know, they've kind of been victim to their feelings instead of commander-in-chief of their feelings. So it's a fresh start in the career, and that gives you an emotional grounding that is priceless. Cancers! Cancers are getting a fresh start with belief, and that's going to be a tough one, Cancer. To Cancers basically were like, I think, they had a lot of karma with beliefs. In most of my Cancer clients, it's that they they married into a religion and they just like swallowed their 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 so cancer is just like okay I'll convert for you honey and and so they had a lot of wounds with like not listening to what they believe and honoring their well what do I believe and what do I think and that sort of thing so now cancers are getting a fresh start and this is what you believe about relationships what you believe about marriage so it, you know so those are the hot topics where beliefs were hot wrong or right. Now cancers are like, okay, it's a fresh start. We're going to we're going to erase, we're going to start all over with the encyclopedia. You know, we're just going to start over. With our, and it's all good. And we're not going to be mad that we didn't know in the first time. That kind of thing. Now, the new birth as a result is a whole new thinking approach, a whole new attitude. A lot of your thinking has been corrupted around this prove not prove that you're right, not right, wrong, I don't know, you know. And so a lot of your mental processes have been corrupted by the fact that there was this question in the background of whether or not you believed or not. So the system was running this background thing the whole time, which corrupted your thoughts in the foreground. So now cancers are, it's like, okay, start over with the beliefs. And it's like, okay, this is a fresh perspective, a new attitude, a new, a new way of thinking about things, and a new way of talking to yourself, I think. All right. Leo's. Leos are getting a fresh start with trusting themselves. Ugh, I have a Leo rising. Very true. <laughs> Very true. Um, that was the whole question. Can I trust myself? You know, like, um, can I trust myself with this? Can I trust myself with that? Especially when you're an astrologer because you're just like, oh, you know, <laughs> myself is telling this, but society says that. So it's, it's, it's all sorts of crazy cuckoo stuff. But Leos and Leo risings, lost the ability to trust themselves somewhere along their spiritual way. And so they were trembling around boundaries. Now, not trusting yourself leads to addiction, sex issues, intimacy issues, uh, people uh, abandoning you, uh, people betraying you. This is the eighth house of boundaries, basically. So uh, Leos get a fresh start with boundaries. Basically, you are re-virginized energetically. <laughs> and what you're creating as a result is new self-esteem, Okay. It was eroding your self-esteem because there were so many trust betrayal issues. It was making you feel like a piece of shit. So now that you can trust yourself, you can now value yourself and you don't have to double talk and you don't have to show off or dance or look pretty. You can just own it and you don't have a problem in the background owning it because you've made peace with trusting yourself. So I think this is going to be a, a really interesting time for the Leos. Virgo, Virgo, this full moon will be in your sign. So you are going to really feel this. Everyone who is friends with the Virgo, just take a couple steps back. <laughs> just give a little space. This is the most time they're in charge uh, in the full year. Um, and you're getting a fresh start with relationships. <laughs> you could feel the collective release just now. <sighs> Poor Virgos. All their karma has been with relationships. Um, how they treat themselves, how they, tr how others have treated them. It's a vicious cycle, and they've had a lot of relationship karma. And and you know, when, uh, it's like Virgos come with the facts, and it's like, the, you know, in readings and stuff, they would you know tell me, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The world is, it's not the world is out to get you, but you got lots of relationship karma, and that's where they're working out their karma. But Virgos felt very picked on, and like God, universe wasn't being fair, but it was just your process. So. You've learned everything you need to know, I think, about relationships of the past. It's time now for a fresh start with all relationships, including the relationship to yourself. So you approach yourself with, you know, innocent before guilty. Okay, so a fresh start means you are innocent first. You assume you're innocent and everything is good. You assume you're the virgin and you take that assumption. Now what ends up being created is a new character. So that new that full moon conjoining Earth is the birth of a new character. So that means that 
neurotic Virgo goes away. You know what I mean? Like overworker Virgo goes away. Uh, martyr Virgo goes away. Superhero, super healer Virgo goes away and ignoring thyself. You know, all these different versions of Virgos I've seen. And there's going to be a whole new Virgo because it's going to be based on this treating yourself the way you should be treated. That's it. <clears throat> Libras. Libras are getting a fresh start with health and daily life. So Libras have kind of felt... They had a lot of past life about karma, about really being there for the world or not being there. Um, they have a complicated story, but a lot of their karma was with daily life, with health, with survival issues. Um, and so they've been kind of tender in daily life. So Libra's kind of got a little crusted and, and started to accept like, oh, this is just the way the world is. And, you know, it's like, and now you're getting a fresh start, a fresh start with like life can, can be totally healed. It can be totally different than what you have thought it would be. Okay, now what's created is new faith. So because your life starts changing, you start realizing, oh, there's a lot more to this than life, than meets the eye. And that's not to say that Libras aren't spiritual. Uh, they are, but they have Virgo in the 12th, so they're very kind of, Virgos, Libras are very inflexible about what spirituality is, like not flexible at all. They're like, this is the way it is. And there's no argument there, which is weird because a Libra will be as accommodating about anything else in life out there. But, like, you want to talk about God, they're like, nope, this is the way it is. I don't know why, but they got Virgo in the 12th. So you're going to have a new faith built because your reality is going to show you, like, oh, it turns out, no. <laughs> there's more options than you realized. Scorpio. Scorpio is getting a fresh start with self-love. Ooh, I've seen so many Scorpios. Uh, Sc I you're getting a fresh start with self-love. And basically, I was saying I'm seeing so many Scorpios because I'm looking forward to Scorpios starting to love themselves and, and treat themselves better. But all of your karma, all of Scorpio's karma has been around love and love affairs and lost love and lost children and creative projects that went wrong. And so it's been very painful and tender life for Scorpios this lifetime because they came as so much uh, heart, heart, broken heart, broken heart karma. So it's time to give the world a full second chance, Scorpio, okay? And, um, and you're going to get a fresh start, basically, with self-love. And by loving yourself differently, you're going to get a new social life. <laughs> yeah, a new social life. And uh, that doesn't mean your, your friends can't come with you. They can. But you're basically going to get a whole new reputation because your entire reputation and every, the way the world has always treated you has been a reflection of these uh, heartfelt wounds. And so, um, so believe it or not, I mean, my brother's a Scorpio, so I'm looking forward to telling him, I told you so. I told you so. <laughs> I told you the world would change. They were so convinced that the world was out to get them. But it's not. It was based on their, their wounded heart. Sagittarius. Sagittarius are getting a fresh start with emotions. And this might be an introduction to their emotions, depending on the Sag. You know, a lot of Sagittarius that are checked out of their feelings. Um, so it's going to vary. But it's, it's time to have a fresh start with your feelings and how you feel in life. All their issues came with family. All their karma came with family. So... Family is a, a wounded, is a, has been a painful word for Sagittarius's, and now it's like time for a fresh start, okay? Now, by giving yourself a fresh start, which is basically giving yourself the childhood you wish you had, write it down, <laughs> giving yourself the childhood you wish you had, by giving yourself that childhood you wish you had, that is the fresh start. And, and do it now. I don't care if you're 96 years old, 97, 98, 99, do I have 100? It doesn't matter how old you are as a Sagittarius, do it. Now... The, the full moon earth means a new career opens for you. So your career and all the things that have happened in society have all been reflections of your family pain. So by healing your family pain, you open the, open the door to what's possible for your legacy. Very exciting, I think. All right. Then the Capricorns. Capricorns are getting a fresh start with their thinking. So Capricorns have been stuck in um, a certain type of thinking uh, and that thinking was all based on their karma and feeling guilty. Capricorns really probably have a lot of guilt, a lot of poor me stuff, a lot of Pisces stuff. Like their mind is where a lot of their karma worked out. And as a result, that sort of polluted their beliefs about what was possible. So you're getting a new day, a fresh start when it comes to the way you think about things. No prejudice, no assumptions, completely let us see. Okay, And what this does is begin or kind of break ground 
with a new belief in yourself that you never had before because your mind was always undermining you, right? So now that your mind doesn't undermine, you can craft a whole new belief and you believe it because your mind isn't trying to deceive it. I think I'm channeling right now. Aquarius! Aquariuses are getting a fresh start with values and self-confidence uh, and self-esteem. So Aquariuses have played all of their karma out in uh, their value, the way they were valued, the way they were able to make money or not make money. They kind of felt, you know, they kind of felt judged and some felt obligated, some reluctant to, to really bet on themselves. All of their <clears throat> karma has been through self-esteem, manifestation, and abundance. Taurus issues, basically. So it's time to give yourself a fresh start uh, with, these, with your value, like completely clean state. You could say start over with your credit rating, your self-credit rating. And on the other side, you are birthing new, new trust in yourself. So by giving it, this is what was keeping you from trusting yourself was that you are constantly uncertain on what you're worth. So once you're certain on what you're worth, huh, I can trust myself, right? I can trust, I can build on this. I can count on myself. So it's a huge change. I'm looking forward to seeing the Aquariuses. Be compassionate with money and self-esteem. Pisces! You, Pisces, this is it. Pisces have gone through an eon change and they are getting a fresh start with behavior and character. So everyone, you're about, if, you, if you keep your Pisces, um, you're going to see them shift shape now into a whole new character. It's crazy to watch, so watch it. Okay, like, but they're going to become a new, a new fish and swim differently and all that sorts of things. And what ends up happening is their relationship cycle changes too. So um, you're going to end up manifesting a new way of treating yourself because you've let go of old behaviors. And that's the thing for Pisces is um, when you're a Pisces, you play your karma out in your actions. So all of us know Pisces that did something crazy, right? They, they literally play out their karma in their actions. And the reason is, is so it's undeniable. Like, no, you have this issue. You know what I mean? Like, they need the evidence because Pisces are like, oh, I don't know. It could be this. It could be that. You know, like, that's how they kind of pretend and, and, and swim around it. But it's like, but eventually they swim, they keep swimming into the glass bowl. And recently, Pisces have ascended out of that old behavior. And this is really the fresh start of the new behavior with this birthday cycle. Um, and what ends up happening is you're going to treat yourself entirely different. Treating yourself entirely different means now maybe you don't have to guilt yourself. Maybe now you don't have to shame yourself. Maybe now uh, you give yourself the benefit of the doubt. So these types of things, I think, come into crystallization. And all of your relationships end up uh, elevating to a new level because you are no longer, you've stopped doing that behavior and you're doing a new behavior, really. So Pisces, just put the new truth into action. That is all you need to know. So it is a razor sharp. Virgo full moon, I believe everyone will be drawing a line, and that line is absolute, and of course, we'll be carrying out that line for the rest of the year. I do have some exciting announcements, so stick around for a little information. And now some news for your information. The first is, I will be attending Love Fest Day. This Love Fest Day has been redesigned. It will be in Denver, Colorado on March 3rd, 2019 from 1 to 4 p.m. Mountain Time. And it is a new kind of uh, reinvention of what we did last year. Last year we did a lot of assemblies and streamed them live, but it didn't feel intimate enough. So now we're doing more of a workshop approach. We're going to do a workshop and it's going to be held at the Full Moon Bookstore, which is really cool. So you can walk out with some incense, you can walk out with some spiritual supplies, and also it's introducing them to you and that sort of thing. So really helping the lightworkers come together in a place uh, that makes a little more spiritual sense for the public. This is going to be available right now. You can go to lovefest.me for tickets. We're charging for tickets because each of our attendees will get some one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one work on our bodies, on our spirit. Um, there will be someone there who reads Akashic Records. And of course, I'll be doing a lecture. My lecture will be focusing on uh, birthing your new ego and breaking free from your old ego because that will be pretty much where we uh, are spiritually at that moment. So if you're interested in tickets, if you're in town, I'd love to see you. We always have dinner afterwards too, especially for those who uh, come from out of town. 
All right. But uh, if you'd like to purchase a ticket or learn more, visit lovefest.me. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of information there. The next little item is, of course, my Countdown to 2019 seminar. This was a fantastic three-hour video. It outlines the entire year, and it's on sale right now. So there is a substantial discount if you want to get it. A lot of people are giving me feedback now that we are half, like six weeks into the year. Um, I was going to say halfway through February, but six weeks into the year, people are telling me it is dead accurate as far as the spreadsheet data that I provided. And so, and I've, and it has been accurate even for myself. There were times when I was literally going through my own ascension sickness and stuff. And I was like, you predicted it, <laughs> you know, like, and sometimes I'm like, oh, did I make it then? <laughs> you know, so if you haven't, uh, come on down, you can learn about it at newyears.guru, newyears.guru for my countdown to 2019. And then finally, as promised, our Breaking Free Summit that's coming this summer on Mount Shasta in California. I've had some miracles already beginning around this Mount Shasta event. If you don't know, uh, this will be a multi-day retreat. We now have an online site where you can go learn about it. In fact, if you go to the site, uh, click on the Backstage Pass. Okay, you'll see it. You'll see it has a big countdown. Click on Backstage Pass because... We're giving away a free little, um, a free online course basically that preps you for the journey of breaking free. And this is just something we're giving out of graciousness. So if you want that, awesome. If you're ready to purchase, right now there are early bird rates and these early bird rates only last for the next two weeks. Uh, come March, they, they go up to their original rate. So this is us all and our planning of how to be fair to everyone and how to accommodate and how to pay for the thing. Um, but nonetheless, I would say if you're on a budget, you'll want to hit this right away. We only have 28 seats available. Uh, there's everything on the website, but in essence, we have uh, several masters of several craft helping people to break free from their ego consciousness on the mountain of Mount Shasta, which uh, most people agree in the spiritual community, Mount Shasta is the root chakra of the earth. So we're literally taking our root to the root of the earth and we're throwing it in the volcano, so to speak. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, either way, it's going to be fun because it's going to be a whole bunch of light workers way up in the mountain. Um, I'm sure we'll have altitude highness. But if you would like to know more about it, please come down, sign up, register, so at least I can keep you informed. Um, if this goes well, we'll continue with these types of retreats. So stay in our mailing list anyways uh, because we might have something in the future. If this was this one isn't it, maybe you'll want to wait uh, for to heal something else. But uh, the fast link to it is breakingfree.guru. Breakingfree.guru. So go to breakingfree.guru and I'll take you straight there. It'd be guru for you and guru for me. Hmm. All right, my friends. That's all I have for this week. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. Remember as the time goes on, I mean, not to complain, but um, the last 10 days for me have been very difficult uh, as I was releasing old patterns. And one thing I've noticed after doing this for 13 years, it always hits me before it hits the public. And I'm always kind of educated on it myself, so I'm grateful. But I will say this one is a bit of a doozy. And you really just need to be good to yourself and let that old soul story vapor off. All right. Uh, if everything goes well, I'll see you next week. I'm not making promises anymore. I love you, friend. Live, love, be. It's serious joy, joy, joy.